Hey there everybody, have a, listen, have a listen to this man for 30 seconds before we get on to the next man. But when you look at what we did, we, we, rebuilt, we rebuilt our military, we added Space Force. Everyone said, oh, Space Force, what is that all about? When they came in, Biden wanted to end it. He said, what is this again? It's going to turn out to be one of the most important. It hasn't happened since Air Force 78 years ago, and it's unbelievable now. China and Russia were taking over space, and now we're leading in space because these space forces. Yeah, now here's a video I made some months back. I'm only gonna play seven minutes of it, but the seven minutes are important. We're gonna lead into more ships leaving our realm than what I showed you last time. Much more. Hey there, everybody. You know this guy? <clears throat> some of you might know who this guy is. This guy is retired Air Force Lieutenant General Stephen Quast of the Space Force. And here today he's speaking at Hillsdale College in Florida. Now, Hillsdale College is a similar type of thing to TED Talks, where you go and speak to an audience. The difference is TED Talks is full of academics and uh, hippies, conspiracy theorists, all this type of stuff, even though they don't let the truth on. But Hillsdale College is different. This guy is speaking to a room full of retired millionaires and billionaires who are looking at investments into the future of two, three hundred years for their family wealth and the rest of it. Yeah. So let's hear what he has to say. When we ask this question about do we need a space force? I'd like to unpack that a little bit because it's important to first start with why. Why do we need a space force? And once we understand why we need a space force, then we can talk about, well, when do we need it? And what should it do? Critical elements of this central question we're going to explore this evening, and I'm looking forward to your questions. But one of the most important points of thinking, space is going to change world power. Because of the power of space and what it can do, we're going to explore that a little bit tonight. But it's also a story of... Okay, bear with me. Just play a little bit more. Here. Germany was competition for the airplane, the tank, and the nuclear weapon. That we eventually won, but at great cost. China is our competition. Russia is our competition. They see the power of the economy of space in these four sectors. And they are rushing to that future. And there is no guardian force in America. But there is in China. China has already built the organization and has the strategy and the doctrine, the technology and the builders for their guardian force in space. They are building a navy in space with the equivalent of battleships and destroyers that will be able to maneuver and kill and communicate with dominance. Chinese are building ships to go out into space and dominate it. You hear all that? This is coming out of this guy's mouth. Alright? Let's take it a little bit further. It's not about making better satellites or even having a constellation of satellites. When you see China on the far side of the moon mapping today the minerals what? China is on the far side of the moon, mapping minerals and resources. Yeah? And this is what's got you all riled up. A continental United States, let's say we're in Miami, and we're looking out over the wide open ocean. That ocean is deep space. The orbit around the Earth is the shoreline where the waves are crashing. The deep water is space. And there is a continent out there three times the size of Africa. That's the moon. There's a continent out there three times the size of Africa, and that's the moon. And nobody lives there, Stephen. Well, momentito. 
a continent, Stephen, three times the size of Africa, that nobody lives there. Which one is it? That one? This one? This one? Because you have continents out there that you codename Mars and the Moon. So that when you say to the people of the world, oh, we've been to the Moon, we've been to Mars, inside yourselves you're not lying. Because you've been to these places out here that are codenamed Mars and the Moon. Not the lights in the sky we're talking about. These are the Chinese ships are going out there and coming back in. I said this last week. Right? Let's bring it a step further. Of Africa. That's the moon. And nobody lives there. So in three days away, it has massive amounts of everything that Mother Earth has, to include water on the South Pole, in the craters, greater than the Great Lakes as far as volume. And China is racing with ships on that open ocean to that great, open, desolate place that can be turned into resources and blessing for a marketplace. And they're doing it not just to get the resources, but to tap into the trillion-dollar markets on planet Earth. Imagine what you could do if you could sell technology to somebody from China and deliver Wi-Fi. And once you've built the infrastructure in space, you can deliver it for pennies that energy over time. They will tap into those trillion dollar markets as they have in the past, as we have in the past, and fund their ecosystem, their economy, their marketplace in cis-lunar space, which is basically the distance between the Earth and the Moon and beyond. And we, as an American society, we are sitting on Miami Beach, sipping our pina colada, looking out at the waves, and as we are watching China build this navy with battleships and destroyers going out in the open oceans and off to this continent three times the size of Africa, we are building buoys and lighthouses, which are the satellites. They can see and hear what's going on, but can't do a darn thing about that rover on the back side of the moon. The you hear this moon. ship? But if we were to try to go there, they could shoot us down. Oh! Shoot and you down. It matters. Speed matters. Because whoever gets to the new market sets the values for that market. So, have we gathered up what this guy just said? This guy from the Space Force is standing up here and he's saying if you're standing on the beach in Florida and as you look out over the ocean, that ocean is outer space. Okay? I've got stuff coming up on my screen here. It'll that ocean is outer space. Mm. And the Chinese are building huge ships, naval ships, and they're going down there and they are mining on the far side of the moon. So I'm just getting uh, back here to the marine traffic map, okay? Now, Mr. Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Stephen Quast talking about that open ocean and he said that great open desolate place right it's called outer space Stephen and then you're telling us you have buoys and satellites which is how you monitor the Chinese and the Russian ships so those are where your satellites are that's what satellites are for yeah okay we'll get just a moment so I'm uh, just covering the bottom right hand side of the screen now all these little arrows that you see fishing boat position fishing boat position unspecified ship unspecified ship unspecified ship unspecified ship all right another unspecified ship and this one we're going to have a look at this one because this is the one that is called A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A Gross tonnage nothing, dead weight nothing, length six hundred and thirty-nine meters by ninety-one meters wide. Uh nothing up here, no sign stuff. Position is there. Location time, latitude, longitude status. Have a yeah, there should be some more. 
And here we have the Vessel timeline, gives absolutely nothing away. Speed and knots, nothing. Range, nothing. Zero, zero, draught, zero, zero, zero. Companies that might be using it, the build, the dimensions, the tonnage, the gear, the engine details, the contacts, owner, manager, nothing. So here we go. Let's have a look at this unspecified ship position received via satellite. <clears throat> so you click on it. Fishing boat. It says fishing. Full access. Learn more. So then they say to you, oh, you really want to have a closer look at our marine traffic map? Pay us £78.30 and we will send it to you. Not paying for it. So here's a ship. 19 EPUJ, that's its name, and it's stuck down there 500 miles into thick ice. So, here we go. 19 EPUJ. Add to fleet, more info. Nothing, really. So here's the vessel details for boat number... I-9 or 1-9 EPUJ. Let me zoom in here on a thing or two here. So take a look at this here. MMSI 5578937 call sign blah 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 flag Kiribati. Type of ship Rasson. Gross tonnage nothing. Dead weight nothing. Overall length breadth not available. Year built nothing. Status active. Position received. Vessel timeline blah blah blah. Again, you look for details on this ship, nothing. Sat, phone number, sat, fax, everything. They give away zero information. Now here's another ship down here in the ice. It's codenamed Four. You call your ship Four. Maybe you've got four of them. You know, and you're a bit uh, dyslexic, you call your ships One, Two, Three, and Four. <laughs> so... This is the, the details for ship number four. Again, nothing. Call sign, nothing. Gross tonnage, nothing. 516 meters long by 80 meters wide. Status active. Position received, 18 hours, 12 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Area, I-N-L-R-U, inland, Russia. Didn't the Don say that Russia and China... Were building ships to in outer space and they were taking over but not anymore and this is ship number four general nothing companies nothing build nothing again zero details owner manager nothing recent port calls arrival time departure time no records found that's strange the maritime people really like to keep records don't they Look at this, people, I zoomed in on this. Passenger vessel. Passengers. What kind of passengers are going down through there? Down into Antarctica. Passenger vessel? How much are the tickets? Who's on board? <sighs> Can we book a ticket? We want to go down. We thought, no, 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 something's going on here. And you see them fishing boat things that you, I was talking about earlier on? That's a code name for spy ship. Okay. So there we go, passenger vessel, full access, learn more, received last position three hours ago. So even here when we sit and count, we've got one, oh, there's a port, another port, and another port. What is that with these circular things being ports? On my video called, uh, Hi Brazil and a few more lies. I showed up what ports look like out in the ocean, but the arrows are ships. One, two, three, four, five, all stuck in the ice. So you see that these uh, Russian and Chinese ships are registered in Kiribati. And Kiribati is the weirdest place in the world. I told you all about it before. Somebody come down, Chinese come down with a big aeroplane full of $10 billion, gave it to everybody. They used to make skirts out of grass. Now they're making them out of $100 bills. And they can't sell them. <laughs> that was a joke. Ah, Kiribati, 
is on the international dateline. But New Zealand and Australia do not want Kiribati on a different day than what they're on. They're on. So this has to go around Kiribati to keep Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday. So that when they wake up on Tuesday and they got to get a message to Kiribati, they got to make sure this message gets to Kiribati on Tuesday. Whereas if the fucking line was down here, get there on Wednesday. Excuse my language. Ah! Now, uh... now, I don't think that these ships dock in Kiribati. They're registered there. If you go out th throughout Europe, look at all the ferries going over the English Channel and in northern Europe, you'll see that they're registered in Nassau. But they never dock there. And way back through the years, you know, all the tankers that used to sink and get uh, hijacked, they were always registered in Liberia, Liberian registered tankers. But they never docked there. They're just registered there. So these ships don't dock in Kiribati. They're just registered there. Yet, some type of trade route could be going on. There could be tunnels to Kiribati where large amounts of goods are shipped to. And then they have to board these huge ships. Now, if you go look, look up anywhere at the largest ship in the world, it'll show you this giant container ship, 410 meters long. So these other ships that are 560 meters long and 80 meters wide, they are not registered as large ships. Nobody knows about them. But they don't dock here in Kiribati. But Kiribati has been bought and sold so that it can be used as a registration point. And it is quite possible that they do. That these large ships don't come any further north than here. So that nobody sees them. So that the, 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 the stuff can come in in the tunnels, go in the ships and go out. Because I had a commenter. Now, uh, compliments to Mickey and Karen from uh, Sun and Moon Family United channel. Because they found my first video called Kiribati called Marine Traffic Map and Kiribati Human Carpet, and they put it up on their channel. Fortunately enough, Dave Weiss got a hold of that video, saw that I put up some stuff on the large ship that was going down through the ice, and it's been working on it ever since. Fair play to him. That's what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to get out there. It's not about me. But here I am today, now I'm showing you four or five more ships, passenger ships, fishing boats, unidentified ships all going up and down through there of huge proportions absolutely huge proportions maybe they dock in Kiribati maybe not now here's another thing one of the commenters said to me he said that he worked in a factory that made nail clippers nail clippers scissors toe clippers tweezers you know those type of little stainless steel things that you buy once in your life or maybe you'll buy one every 10 years if you lose it or if it goes blunt or something right 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 am i right i'm all right but he could not figure out because in the fact leaving the factory were hundreds of container loads full of nail clippers scissors tweezers uh clippers all this type of stuff and he wondered to himself now where the freaking hell are all these things going these are a once in a lifetime item so he he, he obviously saw the video and two things clicked inside his head what the frig so does our southern neighbors have claws so that big enough claws that they blunt a pair of claw clippers once a week and they need new ones? I don't know. A pair of nail clippers last me 10 years. But if you have to make that quantity of them for shipping out, where the freaking hell are they going? Are they going somewhere to someone who is incapable of making them themselves, don't have the raw materials to make them themselves? But they say, ah, you bring us some shiny white, shiny things, silver things for cutting nails. And we give you these barrels of black stuff. Deal? Deal. You know, this Antarctic Treaty that everybody is sticking to may have been drawn up by our southern neighbours 
on the far side of where these ships are going, who do not want conflict in these areas. And they say, OK, we'll do business with you, but you've got to have a treaty where you do not start fighting over this area. If that's the case, we can do business. That's maybe why they've stuck to the Antarctic Treaty. They can't break it. They move north here and they fire rockets from Afghanistan to Bananistan and back. They don't give a shit. Blow the world up. Burn down the rainforest. But don't go near Antarctica because you're going to piss off the penguins and you're going to melt the ice. Right? And you're going to breathe out CO2. No breathing. Okay? Whereas there's a treaty. And I reckon that treaty has many more signatories than what they are telling us. You've seen my videos of the lands beyond. And these people, if they want to do trade, they've, they've, they've drawn up the Antarctic Treaty and they've made all these asshole countries sign it. Even North Korea has signed it. Everybody signed it. Oh, killing one another up here. But, oh, let's, we, you know, uh, we, we can make nail clippers too. Yeah, we want to sell nail clippers. We want that black stuff. Could be gold stuff. Oh, we got this goldy stuff. It's too soft for us to cut our nails with. Oh, that's okay. We've got this silver stuff. It's hard as nails. Cut your fucking nails, no problem. We'll swap you the silver stuff with the goldy stuff. Deal. And you saw one of my videos as well. There are islands way down there called Venetia. And the Phoenicians are down there opening banks, lending money to hobo goblins, and in this way, take over their land and take over their everything. There's a lot of dark shit going on out there. There's a lot of piracy out there. There is no going there. You can forget about that. It's like getting a ship, getting a plane, getting in anything. You'll freeze to death, Benny, before you get anywhere. And uh, there are stories of uh, pirates, inhospitable lands. Now, there may be sunshine lands on the far side of it. We don't know. But there are ships going out there, plenty of them, passengers, spy ships spying on everybody. Uh, uh, Space Force have got satellites and buoys out there to keep an eye on the Chinese ships and Russian ships in space, which is the deep ocean, to Mars and the moon. The three times the size of Africa, and it's only three days away. It's full of resources. We want some. The Chinese have 500 meter ships and they're going up and down there getting them. And, and we can't make nail clippers fast enough for these people. Something's going on. This video can explain a lot. The Don is talking about it. The Space Force General is talking about it. The Marine Traffic Map is talking about it. Now, hopefully David Weiss gets a hold of this video as well, because there's a lot more information on this here. And you're not going to just get your hands on the marine traffic map. I had the bottom right-hand corner covered here, because I am covering up the source of where I'm getting this from. Okay? Because we've gone back in time. You know the way uh, air traffic control and NASA, who will run air traffic control, they keep a record of all these flights that ever took place so they can go back and say, oh, well, on that day you did this, if you flew here. They keep a record of the marine traffic map as well. It goes back in time. You just got to go, know where to go and look for it. Because they're not letting it out. And they are letting it out. It's there. Everybody has to see it. But they're hiding now what, what, what went on in Antarctica. But they can't hide what they have previously recorded. Now, fuck me. Maybe they might go back and wipe all that out too. So this is an important video, share it out, send it to everybody, download it, keep it in a safe place, all right? Because if the days of darkness ever come, future generations of children will still think that they are on a ball, on a snooker table, in the middle of a frantic game of snooker between Alex Higgins and Jimmy White, both smacked out of their heads on whack! You don't want that happening. So keep this for future generations. Take care, everybody. Love you all.